Okay, my name's Ellie Stunt. Um, I'm the founder of a UK charity, Pancreatic Cancer Action, and also a founding board member of Pancreatic Cancer Europe. Yes, when I was diagnosed, I was, well, I was only 41, and um, I'd never heard of pancreatic cancer. Uh, so when I was told I had a mass on my pancreas, um, A, I didn't know it was cancer, and B, I didn't know anything about it. And um, I was very quickly rushed to, to surgery, um, and um, I had been experiencing symptoms for several months before my diagnosis, but um, I couldn't attribute them to pancreatic cancer because I didn't know what the symptoms were. Um, I didn't at the time realise that only around about 10% of patients can actually uh, have the surgery because usually their cancer is so far advanced that it's not practical or possible. Um, and I didn't really learn about that until afterwards. And then when I realised the statistics surrounding the disease and I've been in the UK, um, the uh, five year survival rate at that time was five, uh, 3% which was shocking. So the stats shocked me. Uh, the fact that I'd not heard about it shocked me because I'd heard about breast cancer, prostate cancer, and lots of other major cancers. Um, and um, I, I just really thought, well, wow, if I've, if I've never heard of this, how many other people have never heard of pancreatic cancer? And if I'd not known about the symptoms, yet I was experiencing them, how many other people don't know that the symptoms that they may be having are attributable to, to pancreatic cancer. And we know that the treatment options are relatively limited for pancreatic cancer. Um, and so if you're not eligible for surgery, then you have uh, chemotherapy um, and possibly chemo radiotherapy. But there's little else and there's not a huge suite of drugs uh, for patients uh, to take advantage of. So that uh, is why on average, there's a four to six month um, survival rate of people diagnosed with late stage pancreatic cancer. So I really, with the lack of treatment options and sort of using today's technology, so to speak, um, I figured that the only way we're going to improve survival in today's time is through early diagnosis of pancreatic cancer. So it's, it's getting the um, the patients to, to know more about it and um, so the, the more we get diagnosed early the more that we have diagnosed um, via uh, a GP route rather than an emergency room then the better the statistics are so that was my rationale for wanting to improve early diagnosis. In Europe um, is, is the same as the world over um, is in terms of what the issues are. Um, we do still unfortunately have a, uh, a lack of public awareness of the signs and symptoms. They don't know that what they're experiencing may well be pancreatic cancer, but, so therefore they don't know to ask their doctors. Um, also, the family doctors and GPs need better education. Um, there have been some some changes in in guidelines and uh, and, and some um, some referral guidelines and, and and some of the symptoms, including new onset diabetes, and uh, that can occur one to th to three years before a diagnosis of pancreatic cancer. It was ironically my first symptom, although I didn't fit the profile for being a, a diabetic at all. And uh, so we need to make sure that uh, GPs have the resources that they need in order to um, identify uh, pancreas cancer. They need to do more training modules. And, uh, and also we need to train the, uh, the, the, the student doctors uh, as well. Uh, they get very little training on pancreas cancer. So the EU could be really helpful in, in, in terms of uh, curriculum for, for trainee doctors. Um, also funding. Um, uh, pancreatic cancer, unfortunately, is one of the poorest funded cancers uh, across all the common cancers. And um, it's, it's really important uh, that we see a change in that. And um, it's not just in terms of um, lab research, which is very important, finding new drugs, 
which is also very important, but understanding the causes of pancreatic cancer, understanding um, the potential familial risk that patients may have, um, and also um, a better understanding of what we could do in order to prevent getting pancreas cancer as well. So I think the, there's, it's not just trying to find new drugs or trying to find a cure. It's much more complicated than that. But we, the only way we can do it is, is, uh, is through much more funding. And unfortunately, it's very, very limited at the moment. Although I have seen a little bit of change with a couple of EU Horizon projects that Pancreatic Cancer Europe are assisting with, um, with the public patient um, perspective so uh, you know that's good to see but uh, we're playing catch up with the the big boys of the cancer world in terms of the amount of funding that we get